The rumor mill is heating up with who could be the potential next head coach for the Silver and Black. That plus a whole lot more coming up on Thursday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, November 30th, 2023. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn win is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. Welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast to get the latest edition of the show. Of course, as always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, thanks, man. The show is really growing on YouTube. Uh, Raider Nation and my man Ari has made that YouTube page grow quick, fast, and in a hurry. Definitely want to shout out Ari. Great job each and every day getting it up on YouTube. Without him, there would be no Locked On Raiders podcast on YouTube. You can check out Ari on Twitter at Ari Produces. You can hit me up on Twitter as well, at your boy Q254. And we got the Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line at 707-654-4693. Real quick, want to shout out anyone who listens to this show on Spotify. Why do I say that? Because on Wednesday, uh, Spotify was rolling out your playlist for the year, like what you listen to the most and kind of ranked the shows or, or whatever music, whatever artists you listen to. Spotify does this each and every year. And so many people sent me either a direct message or tweeted at me at your boy Q254 and had a screenshot of what they were listening to. And it was the Locked On Raiders podcast. And the crazy thing about it was the minutes that they listened to the show. Like some were 4,000 minutes, 5,000 minutes, 6,000. I saw 8,000 minutes for the year. Like someone listened to me for 8,000 minutes in 2023 and the year's not over yet. So that is very humbling. I very I appreciate it in a major way. I cannot tell you and thank you enough for the support uh, that you've given me on this show ever since I took over. And I took over after Jack Del Rio got fired, after he basically fired himself after that Chargers game. When Mark Davis made the move to go to John Gruden and uh, Jack Del Rio came out after the game and said, hey, I just was informed I won't be back in, uh, in, in 2018 or the 2018 season. And uh, yeah, so right after that, I got hired here on the Lockdown Raiders podcast, and I've been doing this show ever since, and it's really grown. It's been a lot of fun. We've uh, cried together. We've laughed together. We've had a lot of good times and uh, talked a lot of Raider football here. So thank you so much uh, from the bottom of my heart. I cannot tell you thank you enough. Just like when I meet people at Allegiant Stadium and chop it up, talk a little Raider football with them, that means so much to me, even though you think it might not. And, may oh, I think I'm bothering them. No, you're not. You're definitely not bothering me. I definitely appreciate you. Uh, each and every one of you who listens to the show and anyone I get an opportunity to meet and greet with, maybe at Allegiant Stadium, at the game, or whatever the case may be. So just wanted to make sure I got that uh, off top and thanked everyone who's listening. Listening to Coming up on the show, I should say, in segment number three, we got your calls and texts throughout that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line. Segment number two, I know it's not the midseason. I get that. The Raiders have played 12 games, but I'm going to go ahead and give the midseason grades anyway. Why am I going to do that? Well, I did that on my radio show on Wednesday and uh, just kind of thought it was a lot of fun. Got a lot of feedback. Thought Raider Nation had some really good ideas. And so I thought, yeah, this is a good topic to bring to the podcast. So I know 12 games are already in the book. It's almost like the NBA All-Star break, right? You know, they always play the majority of the season. Then they take the All-Star break and then they come back for a handful of games and then they're in the playoffs. It's kind of how it is right here. And the Raiders have already played the majority of their games, but they still have a handful left. But I want to look back. It's the bye week. Let's look back. Let's reflect. And I'll grade this team. I'll look at the offense, the defense, special teams, coaching overall, and kind of what they could do moving forward with the final five games. That's coming up in segment number two. Here in segment number one, I'll give you the news and notes and really want to talk about the Raiders' rumor mill when it comes to the potential head coach or the next potential head coach of the Silver and Black. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about the title sponsor of today's show, which is Prize Picks. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the promo code all lowercase locked on NFL for our first deposit match up to $100. And so we talked about potential name that was out there uh, as far as interest in the Raiders head coaching job. And I say this all the time and I mean it 100%. Whenever you add a name and you add the Raiders to it, it gets that much spicier. It's that much sexier, right? So teams, players, coaches, agents, whatever the case may be, someone usually uses the Raiders names 
to uh, to to make their their story or whatever the case may be a little bit spicier. So on Wednesday, I rolled out the name David Shaw, the former Stanford head coach, and the fact that he would have interest in the Raiders head coaching position. And I do know for a fact that he would have interest in that. But I also know for a fact that he's waiting for this coaching cycle to really get going because he wants to see engage all the openings. And as I rolled out on Wednesday, there's going to be plenty of openings. So yes, he has interest in the Raiders. He obviously has ties, family ties to the Raiders. He knows the organization very well. So it makes sense, but that's just one name that's out there and there's going to be plenty more. And there's been plenty more. We've heard Jim Harbaugh and I do believe that there's interest. I believe there's interest from Jim Harbaugh before Josh McDaniels got hired. He wanted that John Gruden deal. I don't think Mark Davis is going to roll out that John Gruden deal anymore to anyone because, well, it came back to bite him in the backside, even though he was attempting to do the right thing. John Gruden, I mentioned him. His name is floating out there, and I've been hit up a lot on Wednesday. People are hitting me up on Twitter. Q, is this real? Q, what do you know about John Gruden? Is he possibly going to come back? And even on, uh, on, on Sunday versus Kansas City Chiefs when we were at Allegiant Stadium, there was people that I was talking to me on the Coors Light Landing and said, hey, you hear the latest rumor that Mark wants to bring John Gruden back? Look, I'm not here to say that that rumor is false. I'm not here to say that Mark Davis doesn't want to hire him. I'm sure there's a part of him that wants to hire him. Hell, I know that he didn't want to get rid of him to begin with. We all know how it all shook out. We all know the reason why he's no longer on the sidelines for the silver and black. We get that. We know how much John Gruden meant to Mark Davis. I don't believe that that is a, an option. I don't believe that that's, that's really something that Mark Davis would do is go back to that John Gruden well. Right. And I know that the reports say if, if Gruden drops the, the lawsuit against the NFL, then uh, the NFL will look the other way and let let Mark Davis hire him back. Like again, I don't know the credibility of that report. Um, you know, until I hear that, I can't say yes or no about that. But what I can say is I think we've been there, done that. We've seen what it looks like. John Gruden 1.0, great. John Gruden 2.0, not so much. What do you think John Gruden 3.0? It's like you don't just keep going back to the same well. So I don't think that that would be a good decision, even if that's something that Mark Davis was thinking about. And I do believe that he's going to think long and hard about this. He's going to talk to a lot of people. He's going to consult with a lot of people, including the players in the locker room. Of course, a lot of those players in that locker room right now want Antonio Pierce to get the job, and he very well might. But I think that Mark Davis is going to make sure no stone goes unturned, and that's exactly how it needs to be. There's been, what, four coaches since I've been here in Vegas? Since 2021, Gruden, Basaccia, McDaniels, now AP. And if they don't hire AP for the full-time job, the promotion, then it'll be a fifth head coach in a handful of years. Since 2021. That's not going to cut it. You've got to be able to have, you know, continuity at the coaching position. And I know that's what Mark Davis has attempted to do, but he's got to get it right. He's really got to get it right this time. All these guys that I've rolled out there outside of Davis Shaw, uh, Jim Harbaugh, John Gruden. The other problem with those two guys, even though I know Jim Harbaugh is a hell of a coach, I know that wherever he goes, he wins. I know that he's you know been in the college game, obviously been in the NFL, been back to the college game, been very successful every stop, and he's really kind of reinvented himself, and he stayed around the game so much that he can evolve with the game as opposed to John Gruden, where I just feel like what we saw from him in John Gruden 2.0 hasn't really evolved enough. It's kind of like, hey, this is what John Gruden 1.0 was doing. Well, that was many moons ago. You've got to evolve like the game evolves so I just I think that that ship has sailed the other problem is Gruden had all the control when he was the Raiders head coach 2.0 Jim Harbaugh is going to want all the control I don't think that that's a good dynamic I don't think that that's the dynamic that the Raiders need the Raiders need to go and have a real deal GM who hires the coach who brings in you know the, the players that the coach needs like they need to go in the true pecking order they need to function like a real deal franchise not one that's given the coach all the power and he brings in his guy Gruden brought in Mayock Mayock had no power he did whatever Gruden wanted him to do McDaniels was hired before Dave Ziegler so Dave Ziegler said in his press conference I got the final say on the GM yada 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 I believe him to a certain extent, but McDaniels was hired first, so he had to sign off on Dave Ziegler. So, yes, they might have gone back and forth. They may have had arguments about this player, that player, what we should do with this pick or that pick, but at the end of the day, the McDaniels' influence was way, way heavy on Dave Ziegler. Again, McDaniels was hired first. He had to sign off on Dave Ziegler to be the head coach. If it's going to be Champ Kelly and Antonio Pierce, great. They're, you know, side by side in one accord with each other. Perfect. Champ Kelly was hired before Antonio Pierce. 
right? And so he could be the true GM and Antonio Pierce could be the true head coach. But if they don't go in that direction, that's fine. If they decide to go in another direction, fine. But you've got to do it in the correct pecking order. GM, then head coach. Not head coach and then GM. You just can't do that. And I know there's a lot of folks that still believe that the Raiders could just rip that interim tag off of Antonio Pierce and rip that interim tag off of Champ Kelly. You cannot. Uh, I've said it multiple times. I had uh, Ian Rappaport. He was on my radio show. I brought it to the podcast last Friday just so you can hear that as well as the rest of the conversation that I was having about the coaching position when it comes to Antonio Pierce and Champ Kelly. But just for those that are believing some of the reports that are out there that know they could just rip it up, uh, that's what uh, GM has said across the league. That's, that's false. You go to NFL Communications and you go and check out the actual operation rules right under strengthening the Rooney rule. It says this, and I quote, Clubs must interview at least two diverse candidates from the career development advisory panel list or a diverse candidate not currently employed by the club. So Antonio Pierce and Champ Kelly do not satisfy the Rooney rule because they are employed by the club. Also, clubs must conduct an in-person interview with at least one external minority candidate for any GM or head coaching interview. So again, Antonio Pierce and Champ Kelly do not satisfy the Rooney rule, which should be the Al Davis rule, which really shouldn't even need a rule, but they don't satisfy that. They are employed by the team. That's on the bylaws of the NFL. So all the reports out there, all the people that are trying to convince you that, no, you can do it, you can just rip off the interim tag, that is false. Now, you might have been able to do that about 10 years ago, but that's not as of now. Uh, the Rooney rule was strengthened in 2022, and so that's what it is right now. So that's all I got for you for segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Coming up segment number two, midseason grades, even though it's not the midseason. We'll get to that after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is Prize Picks. What is Prize Picks? It's daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It's the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America, the easiest and most exciting way to play. It's just you against the numbers. You're not going up against thousands of players, pros, sharks, none of that. You're picking more than or less than two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in just like that. Uh, I think that their new little combo package that they have, the little specials league that they have where you can combine a football player and a basketball player, I think that's awesome. Right, you could pick LeBron James and Travis Kelsey, or you could do, you know, you could pick Devontae Adams. Obviously, not this week, they're on a bye, but maybe Devontae Adams and Steph Curry, whatever. You can combine whoever you want. That's from the Specials League. I think that that's cool. I also think that having insurance is cool. Now, I'm not talking about car insurance, I'm talking about prize picks and their reboot policy. Your entry, stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. Football, basketball games, whatever. If you have a player who exits the game in the first half and doesn't come back in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with the injury insurance policy. All you got to do to get all take advantage of this, matter of fact, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy is where? Prize Picks. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to go ahead and give some midseason grades, even though it's not midseason. <laughs> There's 12 games already in the book, but you got to reflect. You got to look back. Now that they're getting their bye week, it's super late in the, in the game. We get it, right? But that's what you do. You got to look back. You got to reflect and see how this season's gone. Obviously, for the Raiders, it's been up and down. It's been a roller coaster affair, and they're still five games left to go. So I mentioned it before. It's kind of like the NBA all-star break. The majority of the season gets played and then they take a break, get the all-star game in, and then they finish off the season really strong. So that's what we're doing here as well. It's week 13. The Raiders are on a bye. They'll come back next week and get ready for the Minnesota Vikings at Allegiant Stadium week 14 action. So let's go through this real quick. I did this on my radio show on uh, Wednesday on Raider Nation Radio 920, Unnecessary Roughness. And man, there was a ton of feedback. It was great, so I think that it will be some really good feedback here. And, of course, we can get some more calls and texts. Uh, we'll do that uh, tomorrow, responding to this as well. But offensively, let's start there. I think it's real easy to give the grade for the offense. And F, it's just that simple. They went over 20 points one time this season so far. One time, and that was against the Giants, right? They, they got 21 points one time while Coach McDaniels was still the coach, and that was because Max Crosby and Bilal Nichols had that safety in the end zone that put them at 21 points. That's it, 
or 22, whatever the case may be. It, it, no, it's 21. Yeah, there you go. It's 21. That's the only time they ever uh, had got over 20 points. And offensively, they've only done it once, and that was against the New York Giants. So offense, there's way too much talent to not be able to get over 20 points and score consistently. That's been the biggest bugaboo for the Raiders all season long. So if I try to give them that unit anything but an F, you would think I'm crazy. <laughs> you turn this thing off right now and say, bye, Felicia. We're done. <laughs> We're done here, Q. We're done. So offense, F, straight up. Defense, now this is the saving grace. And you know what? You might look at the team and say, I'm not going to break it down unit to unit to unit to unit. I'm just going to overall look at the team. And that's fair, too. That's your, you know, that's your side of things. For me, I want to break it down because I think the defense has been really good. Matter of fact, I'm going to go and give them a B. I'm going to give them a B. Why? They're only allowing 21.3 points per game. They have 28 sacks, 10 interceptions, 7 forced fumbles, and 4 fumble recoveries. And if you remember before the season started, I said uh, 40 and 20 is what I'm looking for. 40 sacks, 20 interceptions. And I'm still looking for 40 sacks and 20 interceptions. Look, there's only 5 games left, so to get 20 interceptions is going to be very difficult. They'd have to get 10 more. But look, Raider Nation, they had 6 last season, the whole season. They had 6 the whole season before. So... For them to be at 10 and still have five games left, you got to feel pretty good about the effort that they've been putting in defensively. Has it always been perfect? No, but they're up to 28 sacks. They very easily could hit that 40 sack number, right? Max Crosby's playing and even playing when he probably shouldn't be playing. He's up to 11 and a half sacks himself. So you got to feel pretty good about him getting up close to maybe what, 15 by the time the season's over, a career high. That'd be fantastic. You know, as long as he's playing in each one of these games, and I don't know for a matter of fact that he's going to, obviously that knee's got to get healthy, but that's what the bye week is for. Uh, hopefully for him to be able to rest and, and recoup and come back and finish out the season really strong, those five games. But uh, the defense has given the Raiders outside of like the Buffalo game and, you know, Kansas City on Sunday when it finally got out of control, you know, then obviously KC got the two touchdown lead, but the defense has given this team chances to win games and, and really been the reason why they've won a few of these games. Even starting off the season in Denver when they picked up the 17-16 win, that was on the strength of the defense. The defense has done their job. They've been a lot better knowing that they were the liability of the team. They've done a lot better this year, and they're not even clicking on all cylinders. Tyree Wilson hasn't even showed up to the party yet. Ja'Korian Bennett, the rookie cornerback, still hasn't even shown up to the party, right? I mean, Robert Spillane's been a really good free agent pickup. Divine Diablo's been playing really well. Uh, Marcus Peters, obviously, he's already gone. That free agent pickup, he's gone, right? Uh, Marcus Epps, he's been, he's been okay. Trayvon Merrick's been playing a lot better, right? The interior of the defensive line has been playing okay. Right, So it, it hasn't even been playing that great, but Patrick Graham has done a hell of a job with that defensive unit, so I'm going to give them a B. Offense, F. Defense, B. All right, well, what about special teams? I'm going to give special teams a B-. minus. Why? A.J. Cole's been punting out of his mind. He has been punting out of his mind. Fifty-one yard, He's averaging 51 yards per punt with a long of 70 this year. He had 22 kicks down inside the 20. So I'm looking at him and giving him a B. I think that he's done really well. I don't want to give him an A because you don't want your punter to be an A. I mean, I, I, you do want your punter to be an A, but you don't want him out there enough to punt to be an A. Plus, there's been some times where he's had touchbacks where, you know, you'd like to see it down inside the 20. Instead, it bounced and it rolled into the end zone. So it hasn't been perfect, but, man, he's, he's still been playing really good ball. So I'll give him a B. Daniel Carlson, Cash Money Carlson, he's missed a couple kicks this year. And, of course, last week we remember the game or with a kick against Kansas City uh, from the, the short kick, the second shortest kick in his career that he missed. Uh, that, that's, that's one. So I got to knock him down to a B. But he's 20 for 24 uh, this season so far with a long of 54 yards. From 20 to 29 yards, 8 of 8. Uh, from 30 to 39 yards, 4 of 5. That's the one he missed on Sunday versus Kansas City. Uh, from 40 to 49 yards, 7 of 8. And then from 50 plus, 1 of 3. So I'll give him a B. I think that that's fair. 20 or 24, I'm good with that. And he's been doing really good on kickoffs. Kick coverage, I think the kick coverage has been good. Every once in a while, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll get a little loose. 7.9 yard, punt, they're averaging uh, giving up per punt return. So that's not too bad, 7.9 yards. And then 24.4 yard kick return. So they're not really getting to the 25 yard line. You're giving the 25 just on a, on a fair catch or, or a touchback. So if you're around 24.4, that's fine. I give them a C because their kick returns haven't been great. Their kickoff returns haven't been great. Their punt returns haven't been great. Now, I know DeAndre Carter had a couple kick returns, punt returns that were like, wow, that's pretty good. But they haven't, had to, they haven't broke one yet. So I just think that they've been okay. They haven't been fantastic. I just think they've been okay. 
So I'll give them a C. So when I average all that out, and I'm not a mathematician, never tried to be a mathematician, I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed, I'm not the brightest crayon in the box. You get what I'm saying? I'm still going to roll and give the special teams unit a B-. minus. So you're keeping track of score, offense a F, defense a B, and a special teams a B-. minus. Coaching. Oh, boy. Buckle up. McDaniels coached eight games this season, three and five. F. Just an F, right? I mean, you thought at moments, okay, maybe they can get things turned around. Here's a win right here. It looked pretty good or it looked decent. Okay, all you got to do is win this game. No. And then on top of that, I didn't even know it was an F until he was gone. After he got fired, then you realize how much of an F it was because, man, the, just the mood around the team was so much different, the mood around the building, and it's still so much different to this day. You go there, there's smiles, there's people, you know, talking, greeting you. I mean, everyone's, everyone's a lot happier now. So you could just tell that that dark cloud, that, that shadow that just kind of followed everyone around the building is gone. So I give him an F. Antonio Pierce, 2-2 two and two so far as the interim head coach. I give him a C-. minus. Why do I give him a C minus? Because I like the rallying that he's done. I love the leading that he's done. I've loved the energy that the team has gone out there and played with. And I don't question any of that when it comes to Antonio Pierce. But coaching is not easy, right? Knowing when to throw the challenge flag, when not to throw the challenge flag is not easy. It's a learning process. Knowing when to go for it on fourth down, knowing when not to go for it on fourth down is a learning process. It's not easy. He's only gone through four games. Knowing when to be aggressive, when not to be aggressive. Knowing what team you shouldn't try to kick a field goal against because, well, they're going to score touchdowns and that field goal is not going to beat them is a learning process. N nothing that I'm knocking him for is, is because he's a bad coach. It's because he's a young coach. He's a new coach. He's an inexperienced coach. Four games. So I think that Antonio Pierce, if he does stay on as the full-time coach, if they decide to go ahead and give him that promotion, which, again, I'd have no problem with, I would like for him to have somebody that's like the challenge guy, right? Like that's your one job is to, okay, should we challenge this? Should we challenge that? Hey, AP, yeah, go ahead and throw the challenge flag. We feel good about this one. Yeah, you can. Yeah, that was a turnover. Uh, you can't throw the challenge flag. Don't throw the challenge flag. I don't care what the crowd, what kind of noise they're making. Sometimes I think AP gets a little hyped up by the crowd and goes with what the crowd is making noise. When he threw that challenge flag on a turnover and he couldn't do that, that was in what, the game versus the Jets? I think it was the Jets. The crowd was super loud. The crowd was fired up trying to urge him, and he just kind of went with it. Can't, can't do that. Got to, got to be able to you know, stay even killed. But, again, that's a growing process. I'm not, I'm not judging them and holding that against them, but just the overall grade. It's like getting the problem wrong. Regardless, it's still wrong, right? But he's going to learn from that, and uh, he's very well aware of that. So I give him a C-. Uh, but the thing is, that C- can grow. And I used this example on the radio on uh, Wednesday. I said, you know, the, as bad as I did in school and, and as bad as my grades were at time, the, the teacher would always say, but Mr. Myers, if you turn this homework assignment in, you could turn that whatever this is into that, right? All you got to do is get a B on this or an A. If you try really hard, then you could turn that upside. Down. Look, I get it. He's got five games left. So that C minus could easily turn into a B, right? I mean, who knows what the Raiders do these final five? This bye week is going to be big for them to kind of get together as a coaching staff and figure out what's right and what's not right, what worked and what didn't work, and then apply it coming up the final five games. So that could easily turn into something much higher than a C-. minus, And then we'll probably feel way different about AP moving forward. And I know a lot of folks are excited about him right now, even with some of the coaching mistakes that he's made. But he's, he's got, the, he's got the, 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 like the pulse of Raider Nation. He's got the pulse of that locker room as well, which is very important. Overall with the team, I put him at a C- minus to a D+, plus around that area. C- minus to a D+, plus, but again, five games to go. And we can revisit that after week 18. And I do think that that's fair, right? There's some players on the team that are, are some really good players, some players that you feel like the team can move forward with. There's some players that you're intrigued by. There's some players that you'd like to see some more from, right? I mean, Aiden O'Connell, quarterback, he's one of them. <laughs> right? I'd like to see Ja'Cory Bennett, the rookie. I'd like to see him step up and play a little bit better. Jack Jones, the guy they just picked up off of waivers by the Patriots. I'd like to see what he's got. Is he a keeper or is he a guy that at the end of the season you kind of let him go because, yeah, he's not going to really fit in with what you're doing, right? There's, there's, there's a bunch of guys on the roster that I believe are making their case for not only getting a lot of playing time the rest of this season, but also being with the team next season. So, again, I, I keep going back to, you know, that, that parent-teacher meeting and the teacher saying, well, you know, all you got to do is, you know, do this, turn this homework assignment in, turn this, turn, get the little extra credit here, and, man, you could be in a really good position. So right now I give the Raiders a C- to a D-plus with the opportunity to 
obviously improve that grade over the final five weeks of the season. Coming up in segment number three, your calls and texts straight off that Lockdown Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about DoorDash. DoorDash is for the person that is super busy, that feels like that they can't stop to go and get something to eat or even stop down to make something to eat. Sometimes you may be like I'm at sitting at my my desk in my studio and putting in some work, and all of a sudden I'm hungry and realize, man, I don't really want to stop and have to cook something or even stop and and go look in the fridge to see what's there and this, that, and the other. I just feel like I want a Grimaldi's pizza. All right, the wife hits up her DoorDash app, sends a Grimaldi's pizza, boom, right to the house, doorbell rings, go get it. I'll take a couple minutes here, eat my little pizza, get the Don, and then I'm good to go. Boom, I'm right back at it, right? And it's easy. It's super easy. And, and the good thing is the wife will do it for me, so I don't even have to break stride and do that. But DoorDash, you got to have the app on your phone. First of all, that's the first thing you do. Download it and download it today. You'll get 50% off the $10, up to $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. And you know $15 right now is like what? A meal deal, right? A burger and some fries and a drink is about $15 just about. So you're going to get up to get 50% off of the $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order as long as you use the promo code LOCK23 when you download the DoorDash app. Again, LOCK23 when you download the DoorDash app and you'll get 50% off up to $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. I also want to tell you about FanDuel. And, well, FanDuel, it's it's where you need to go, right? The weather's getting colder. The NFL stays super hot with FanDuel. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. You've been thinking about joining FanDuel? You should. There's no better time to get in on the action than right now. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, spreads, player props, over-unders, and a whole lot more. Again, super simple. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get into the NFL season the right way with FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts draft that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Went a little long there in segment number one and two. Didn't really realize that. I got on a roll, and, well, once I get rolling, you know how we do. So let's go ahead and jump into a couple calls real quick and a couple texts. Try to squeeze in as many as possible in a few amount of minutes. Start off with Barry from Baltimore. He's calling to talk about Antonio Pierce, Champ Kelly, and also brings up Khalil Mack in the call. Here he is, Barry in Baltimore. What up, Q? Uh, this is Barry from Baltimore. Just wanted to call in today on uh, something I was just thinking about here, and uh, I had to listen to the pod and everything. Um, great pod, always bringing the content. Always appreciate what you do for uh, for Raider Nation. Um, you know, I'm sure you hear this a lot, but it really is my first listen when I'm up working out and everything in the morning. So uh, I appreciate what you do. So I can never thank you enough for that. Um, but I was just sitting there thinking, and I know it's bye week and, you know, and it's early. We got, you know, what, five games left and, you know, everything needs to play out. I get all that. But as a fan, you know, you think about stuff like this and, you know, um, I wouldn't mind seeing what Pierce has, has to do, um, the rest of the games and, you know, possibly bring him in. Obviously, you know, he needs to make some corrections just like anybody being a first time coach. And, uh, I wouldn't mind them bringing back, um, Champ Kelly also. I mean, he seems like he's respected. Seems like he knows what he's doing. I just wouldn't mind it, you know. Obviously, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But I was thinking, um, and I thought this the day the Raiders traded him. I always thought, now hear me out here. This could be, you know, like I said, this is, could be in left field. It, you know, it could never happen. But the day they traded Mac away, it was September, I think, 1st. I'll never forget that day. I always said to myself, man, he's going to be, he'll be a Raider again. He'll be a Raider again. Now, I could be wrong. You know what I mean? But I did notice that the Chargers are about, what, $27 million over the cap right now. Um, I think he counts for like 39 of it or something like that. So, man, if he's released, you got to bring him back. You know, um, I would just love to see it. Him and Max Crosby teamed up. I actually wanted that instead of Chandler Jones at the time. But, you know, I, it is what it is. But with saying that, and you know, keeping Pierce and, you know, possibly Kelly. I know him and Kelly have a good relationship with being in a um, – when he was with the Bears, so you never know, you know. Um, like I said, I know this is probably out in left field at the moment, but it's bye week, so you think of stuff like that, right? So I don't know, just my two thoughts on it, man, and uh, I would love to see it. But, um, yeah, that would just be, you know, I'm sure Ray Nish would love it too. So um, having those teams up, seeing 52 back out there on the other end, um, but who knows. 
Anyways, I'm out, man. Like I said, appreciate what you do. Go Raiders. Thank you for the call, my man. I appreciate you. As far as AP goes, I do believe he has a great chance to return. I really do. I believe Champ Kelly does as well. You know, And if he doesn't, he's going to be a GM somewhere else. Champ Kelly is a guy that's very well and highly respected around the NFL. I've been saying that since the minute that the Raiders hired him to be the assistant GM. If they're smart, they'll hold on to him. I think that he's really a promising guy. But that might not be the direction. Maybe they don't want to hold on to AP. Maybe they, I mean, that's, that's the thing, right? I mean, you, you don't want to just hold on to one guy just to hold on to him. Like, you, you, you want to be confident in him, right? And so if you're confident in, in Champ Kelly, great. Maybe it is Champ Kelly and not AP. Maybe it's AP and not Champ Kelly. That's, that's something that Mark Davis has got to figure out. But both of those guys, I think, have opportunities to stick around. And if not, they're going to be coaching and GM in somewhere. Right, maybe not exactly this year, but sooner rather than later. Uh, Khalil Mack, that'd be awesome to have Khalil Mack back. I'll tell you this: when it was reported and rumored that the Bears were trying to move on from Mack, the Chargers ultimately traded for him. I really was hoping that the Raiders were going to trade for him then. And you know, Mack, when healthy, is really good, and he'd be a hell of a bookend across from Max Crosby. You see what he's doing? He can still play at a high level. He's got to be healthy, but man, him and Max, that would be nice. But we'll see. Uh, what happens in, in L.A. with the Chargers. I'm assuming that Brandon Staley is going to be gone, and so that's probably going to be a whole shakeup there with that team as soon as Black Monday hits. But we'll see. Thanks so much for that call. Thanks for leading us off. Up next, got a text from Mike in Texas Hill Country. He says, hey, this is Mike from Texas Hill Country. My family moved to the Bay Area when I was in third grade in 1970. My dad and I were both in the Navy, and we have been Raider fans ever since. I've been to many Raider games with my dad and my son in Oakland, but never all of us together. We'll all be seeing you at the Vikings game at the Torch. My dad is super fired up about the game and has been since I told him and my son about it on Father's Day. That said, it has been decades since I have seen what I call Raider football. Since AP took over as head coach, it is back. What I think Mark needs to do is at the end of the season, bring in Mad Max, Spillane, Devontae, and Jacobs and get their opinion on AP as a head coach going forward. They are the heart and soul of this team. If they want him, keep him. As to Champ Kelly, remove his tag now. He knows what he has in place and what he needs to change. I have not had this much fun watching Raiders in a long time. See at the game. That's from Mike in Texas Hill Country. And thanks for the text. And uh, as I mentioned in segment number one, they can't just remove the interim tag from Champ Kelly. They've got to uh, hold outside interviews as well. Now, they can have in their mind, and this is how life works. In your mind, you could already have made up who you're going to go hire, but you've got to go through the process. It's just what you got to do. You got to check the boxes. I know no one likes it, but that's what you got to do. So they can't just do that immediately. But I do agree that he knows what he has. He knows what he's looking for. And he's, he's very passionate about being the GM of this team. And your idea of bringing in Max, Spillane, Devontae, Jacobs, and get their opinion on Tano, Antonio Pierce is a great idea. And I know for a fact Devontae has the ear of Mark Davis. Devontae and his opinion matters a lot. And it's so funny, everyone keeps talking about, well, Devontae is going to be gone at the end of the season. They're going to trade him to the Jets. He's going to go ask for a trade. I'll tell you what, Devontae has never had so much say in an organization as he does right now. I promise you that. That I do know for a fact. I don't bring you stuff and say I know for a fact unless I know for a fact. Devontae has a lot of say within this organization, and he enjoys that. Of course, he enjoys winning and wants to win as well. And if he did at some point say, hey, you know what? It's just not happening. I'd like to have an opportunity to go and, uh, you know, win somewhere else because it's not happening here and my career is, you know, running short. I'm sure that they would respectfully accommodate him because they have that much respect for him. But he definitely has a big say in what goes on with the silver and black. So thanks so much for that. And I definitely look forward to checking you and your family out at the, at the torch week 14 against the Minnesota Vikings. One more call so we got time for Raider Ken in Central Florida. He's calling to talk about the coaching position for the Raiders if it's not filled by Antonio Pierce. Here he is, Raider Ken in Central Florida. What's up, Q? This is Raider Ken from Central Florida. Hey, uh, I wanted to talk real quick about, you know, our head coaching position. Um, and the only reason I bring this up is because the topic was broached today, uh, which is the day that I was listening to your podcast this morning which I love. It's fantastic, by the way. You're the first thing I listen to in the morning, um, and I love getting uh, all of my Raider news first thing in the morning. It's awesome. I really do appreciate what you guys do. Um, I had a quick question for you uh, in regards to the head coaching position. Uh, and this this is, you know, this is uh, depending upon whether or not AP gets the job or not. Let's say he doesn't. Um, there's a coaching I guess, vacancy uh, that might be coming up with the Rams. And I was curious to get your opinion.
opinion on what you thought of Sean McVay, and him possibly coming over to Vegas. Uh, he's an offensive-minded coach. Love what he did with the Rams. I know he he kind of you know poo pooed him with uh, you know going all in, but he did win a Super Bowl with the Rams. Kind of left him in a bad spot uh, with draft picks and and that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, curious to get your opinion on you know what you thought of if he becomes available and uh, what your opinion on maybe him sliding over. I love the way he you know what the the, the type of coaching that he's done for that team in L.A. Uh, he's young, he's uh, aggressive, he's, uh, you know, he's an offensive genius. And I think it's something that our players, if we don't lock up AP, I think that's something that we might look at if he decides that he wants to leave Los Angeles. Anyway, I'm curious to get your opinion on what you think of Coach McVay and uh, if you think he'd be a good fit in uh, Vegas, you know, provided that, uh, you know, we, uh, we don't move forward with AP. Have a good one, Q. Love what you guys are doing. Thanks for the call, my man. And that's an interesting name for sure. He'd be a guy that the Raiders would have to trade for. The Rams aren't going to just let him walk for free. But Sean McVay would be, wow, that'd be great, right? I, I, I hold him in very high regards like I do Kyle Shanahan as far as one of the sharpest offensive minds in football. That, that's who Sean McVay is. I would have no problem with that. I think it would be fantastic. He knows how to get the most out of his players. But, again, you'd have to trade for him. And I don't know if he would want to leave the Rams and head to Vegas. I, I just I don't know if that's what he would want to do. I think if he decides he wants to walk away from the Rams and recharge the batteries or or walk away from football as he's just what uh, recently had a, a, a baby not too long ago, he might want to spend some time with the family, right? Or he might want to do some TV. So I don't, I don't know what his you know what his interest would be, but that sure would be an, an interesting phone call. Right. Or, or, you know, if Mark Davis or whoever decided to pick up the phone and say, hey, you know, let me call, let me call the Rams and see if this guy's available or if, if they, you know, what they're thinking about his future. Uh, that would be that would be a hell of a hire. That that's for that's for sure. Right. He would get his guys in there and already got the offensive weapons. And I guarantee those offensive weapons like Devontae and Josh and Jacoby and Hunter would love to be coached up and be under the offensive tutelage of a guy like Sean Mavay. Raider Ken, thanks for that call. Definitely appreciate you. Got a text from the judge I'll get to on tomorrow's show. Raider Izzy, I'll get to your call tomorrow. Text from G-Thang in Redondo Beach, California. I'll get your text in as well. Just ran out of time, went a little long there in segment number two and one. I do appreciate you, though. And since there's no games to talk about, we'll keep the party rolling. We got more news and notes coming up tomorrow. We'll have plenty of conversation. And, of course, we'll get to more of your calls in text as we get ready to close out the week really strong and head into the weekend. And I guess we'll watch football, college and NFL action, because there is no Raider football. So until tomorrow, Raider Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.